Okay, so I'm going to be doing a quarter inch, so I need to be at 20 and 6.6. .6. If I want to do voltage, I'll do it here. So, like there's 19.3. Go to 20. The arrow button here. I want to go wire speed. 6.6. .6. So, let's say that uh, it was at 5.7. We want to go to 6.6. .6. We're going to be wearing a welding quarter inch with 35 wire. We know it's 35 wires right there. I know that I'm on manual mode because of right there. And I'm using mixed gas. You do that here. So that would be pure CO2. That's mixed. And I'm not 100% sure where they've got their mix at. I'm running a, a, a 7525. Um, so. And that's pretty much what we get in the Kansas City area. So uh, 75, 25, and then of course the method would be here. If I want to do um, uh, synergic, I would do that. If I want to weld with a stick, it'd be right there. Lift TIG or scratch TIG right there. But we are doing uh, manual MIG. So. Now I'll go get set up and we'll do a little welding. So like I said, just we got a couple of good heavy tacks there. That's really all we need to hold those nuts on. We don't want them spinning. So, and it's, I was on a tough spot there to try to get those. So next, let that cool off, pull that off, and then weld the orbital valve bracket on. All right, so now I've got my plate where the made up so that is the plate that is going to uh, that the orbital valve is going to attach to but I want to go ahead and weld the nuts in place so they're captive so I once the orbital valves in place I don't have to sit there and try to get a wrench on the other side don't know if it's that big of a deal but it could be so I'm there may as well do it okay so here is the bracket that I made up. This goes in place of where the power steering gearbox used to be. And this just so happens to be the same spline as a uh, Toyota. 36 spline, 17 millimeter, 11 sixteenths. However, this is significantly longer. So I'm going to go ahead and weld these in. I've got them tacked right now. I'll go ahead and weld these in now. And then I'm going to end up having to cut a pretty significant amount of this away. And unfortunately, most of the strength is right here. And you can't brace it. Um, now I could probably brace it here to here. And that's going to be the extent of what I can do. Because unfortunately, I've got a pulley. The power steering pump pulley wants to be in this location. So that's what I've been messing with right now is trying to figure out how I'm going to install the Toyota Camry power steering pump. Have it in place. So I'm having to drop it quite a bit lower than the crank. May still have to go lower yet, but I'm hoping, hoping I can clearance this out and that there's enough strength here that this isn't going to move because it really doesn't take any force. It's not like it's Terry, you know, except for the rotational force of the steering wheel. And that's it. There should not be any load, lateral load on this at all. So um, even if I have to remove quite a bit of this for the pulley, I think it's going to work. So. We're going to work on the Kid stepped up the bat, I saw a 40 
pill swinging from a hat I said there's no way I would ever get shown up by a girl so I threw her my speedball pitch she hit the ball so dang hard well it cleared the fence and as she ran the bases it was clear to see that girl with that ponytail was a little bit better than me Yes, she is a girl with a ponytail a little bit better than me. Time went on and I won't deny it. She was growing on me and I wanted to try it. Knew it was love from that first kiss. Whether early in the morning or the afternoon, wherever she went, sunshine came too. She could drive and walk. Okay, so now we're down to the getting the input tube the from the reservoir and I learned this on my last pump that if I would have left this where it was from the factory it would have been facing downward and which meant I would have had to bring the hose down and up into it which would create a p-trap kind of like you see on a drain on a house which is there as an air break which means that it creates cavitation and it just doesn't work. So on my other one, my other pump, I ended up having to make a new straight pipe coming out because of the way it was sitting. This one, all I need to do is turn it exactly 180 degrees. Problem is there's no place to anchor it here, but there is here. So I'm making this bracket. When I get done, I'll trim it off and clean it all up. We'll leave this on there just for shits and giggles um, but that should solve our problem here that'll hold that in this has an o-ring so I'm anticipating this is going to get uh, that o-ring is going to get destroyed but I have a spare one of these and I have an o-ring kit too so that should not be a problem um, and again this is the other pump so that if I end up destroying this pump it's okay if I ever need it in the future I can always rebuild it the kits for like 30 bucks but if I am going to destroy it, it's just going to be knocking seals and stuff out of it just simply because of the fact that uh, this is getting hot. Um, so I'm getting ready to use the Yes Welder 250 again. Again, it's my go-to welder pretty much. It's just so easy to use. I love the manual settings mode. I've got it turned down to 8th inch steel because that's, yeah, this is slightly thicker than 8th, but, I mean thinner than 8th, but this is a little thicker. So um, this should be fine. I've got 35 wires, so I'm at 20 and 6.1. We're going to see how that works. If it's a little cold, I'll turn the heat up. I'm going to try to bridge that, and I'm going to get this welded around the edge so that this doesn't crack away and then start leaking because, again, this is controlling the steering completely. It's, there's no mechanical link after this. So um, it's my understanding that if you lose a belt with a... Uh, Everybody calls them ortho valves, but they're they're actually a steering control valve. It's my understanding that uh, if you turn the wheel, and when you look at the way the pump is or the uh, the valve is set up, it actually looks like a gear drive pump. So it's my understanding that if you turn it one way, that it will slowly turn those wheels, and you turn it the other way, it'll slowly turn the other wheels uh, the other direction. So. You're supposed to still have some steering, um, especially if the check valves are in place. So, anyway, I'm going to go grab my helmet and uh, we're going to uh, we'll get my helmet on here and then we'll pull out the uh, the glue gun for grown ups. Kind of reminds me a little bit of a metal caulking gun, too. Uh, Cheaters off, I think I can do this without it. I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting my helmet where I want it to be with the uh, with the Optune headgear on, but I don't want to take it off because it's my only, really, it's the only treatment I have that's actually has a real chance of stopping brain cancer. So I don't want to give that up. I might stick around a little while longer. All right, here we go. Metal glue nose for grown-ups. Yeah, it's a little bit hot. Okay. 
I got to the end there, it blew away. But that's how it is. That's actually working pretty good. It's actually not too bad. It's got that bad. Just about right. And on this side, burn it in. smell the uh, zinc again. And I'm going to say this again. There is, uh, you really should be wearing a mask when you're welding anything with zinc or at least remove the zinc before you get to welding it. Obviously anything that's galvanized, that kind of thing. Um, it's not good for the lungs. It's not good for the body. Um, by the way, that got a little warm. Well, it melted my little plastic cap off of there. Yep. Eh, it's a little, a little toasty. But, uh, yeah, oh no, that's not bad at all. That's a pretty good looking well. And, uh, that cools off here in a little bit. I might even just do it now. Throw my glasses on so I don't burn my eyes up and get some metal in it. You got an MRI coming up, and apparently you're not supposed to have metal in your eyes when you get MRIs. So cut that off. and then I'll take the flap disc to it. We'll get rounded off a little bit, make it look a little prettier. And uh, we will have that pump. We'll be ready to, not this one, but the other one. We'll be able to go on that bracket. The bracket is just about wrapped up. And uh, we can throw some paint on it. i got a little dressing up to do on that. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm going to wrote, I'm, I'm going to T9 format. So anyway, so there it is. There's the pump. Here's the original uh, power steering bracket that I've been modifying to work on. Uh, eventually the air conditioner will sit there and I'll put a idler here. That'll do a full wrap around the crank pulley, come back, double back, catch the power steering, go up, catch the AC compressor, which is now my air compressor, and come back over here. And I believe that is going to work out just fine. So, I don't think... I don't know which direction that was in, but hopefully this is still faced upward. Idler here, it's going to be coming. AC here, belt will do a full wrap over the crank, come back, catch the power steering, go up, catch the AC, go over. The AC compressor, which is my air compressor, will handle the tension. So, um, I believe that we should be in good shape. Now, if I find out that this belt coming back up hits here somewhere, this spot here, then I'm going to end up probably having to pick up another idler to catch it and bring it over to get it around that. So, uh, the problem with idlers is that every time you add another bend, it's just another opportunity to bend the belt. And if you're going to bend the belt, eventually heat's going to build up. And so, you know, I'd like to not have a bunch of uh, heat buildup, especially on a belt that is controlling your steering. So, but I'm getting there. This is not going as fast as I was hoping. I was I was hoping to catch, have this done for the weekend. 
So I could go to Disney, Oklahoma, but I think what we're going to end up doing is I am going to be taking uh, the Arctic Cat Wildcat. Um, that was my dad's, and uh, that is now belongs to our family trust, and I'm going to uh, take it and go play with it this weekend. So I need to get out and do a little playing. I figure probably I'd do it while I'm still alive because I don't know if you can play when when it's all done. I mean, maybe there's four-wheeling in heaven. That'd be kind of cool. So anyway, that's going to be it for this part. All right. So I trimmed that off, got the pump out. I'm just going to chase these threads. And that's because when you weld this stuff, it changes the shape of the metal a little bit. So, I'll run this down. I know some guys will just take a drill and run them down, but I don't want to take a chance breaking the tap off. I find that these uh, taps I get at Home Depot and Lowe's, these, this particular one's a cobalt, kind of brittle. So you got to be somewhat careful with them. They're fine for chasing threads, but... They are definitely brittle. For that matter, I've broken Irwin taps off too. It's my understanding that the two flute taps are much stronger than the three. Now the big question is, are the pumps, the tolerances of the pumps, pretty much the same? Because, obviously I used one pump as a mock-up, not my, not my good one. So... Hoping I'm definitely hoping that I got this right. All right, so that make sure this one's good. That's just a nut where this is all thread, so there's a lot of thread in there to chase. Yeah, that one's fine. I've chased this one before, even though I hit it with the, another tack. Imagine if I need to clearance it, I could always take a file to it. Let's we'll see what happens here. Get this thing locked in. Grab the other. Grab the other pump. Now that's interesting. That one's got a pass-through hole. This one does too, but it's got threads. It's a smaller diameter. So I'm going to have to drill that one out. That kind of bites. And... I really 
I thought I studied those well. Better double check. Well, okay, so tensioner's on, that pump's on, and we have the inlet. This is what the inlet would have looked like, which would have been upside down. That's why I had to switch it around. So, that is just about ready. To be painted, and I welded that nut back there. Just about ready to be painted and put on the Super Sammy.